Hello, everybody. We are so glad that you are here with us. <clears throat> um, welcome. We're going to be talking about civil, environmental, and geoengineering today. My name is Michelle Anderson, and I am the industry and pre-major coordinator for the department, which means that a lot of my role is helping students connect with employers and vice versa. And I also connect with the students who are interested in learning more about our programs. So we're happy you're here today. You'll see the agenda on the bottom of the screen. In addition to me, you're going to be hearing from three of our faculty. And also we have four current students from the department who are here with us, who you'll be hearing from later. So I'll let them introduce themselves right before they talk. So we'll introduce them a little bit later. But I wanna tell you about our program. So in our department, we have three majors, <clears throat> civil, environmental, and geoengineering as our three majors. And even before we get started, I'm gonna launch a poll here for you. Mm, Ray, it doesn't seem like anything is popping up when I hit polls. Would you be able to launch that for me? See, I'm coming in now. Michelle, I see it. Oh, you do, wonderful. Okay. I'm not seeing that on my end. So if someone could give me a A-OK -okay when those are coming in. We have about 85% participation rate so far. And looking like an overwhelming majority are loosely familiar. Okay, wonderful. All right, let's go ahead and close that poll. Thank you so much for answering that. I am glad to hear that many of you are loosely familiar and hopefully that will help um, give you a little bit of a base of information as we talk today. So again, starting base level, we've got three majors in the department. And I wanna kind of talk about how those are organized in the department. So you see here we have civil engineering as like a umbrella term for all of these different types of engineering. So civil engineering um, is a larger term for transportation engineering. So if you are a transportation engineer, you're also a civil engineer. If you're a geoengineer, more broadly, you're a civil engineer. So in our department, if you study civil engineering, you'll be taking classes in all five of these more specialized areas, but you can also emphasize in water resource engineering as a civil engineer, for example. But if you're a student who knows that you are really interested in environmental or geoengineering, you can major in those more specific types of engineering if you know, you know that's what you really want to do. So if you're studying environmental engineering, you wouldn't necessarily need to take a transportation engineering class, for example. But I want to make sure that I'm not the one telling you about that. Next, we have a video about our programs from um, four current students. Well, they used to be current. We filmed this last year. A couple of them have now graduated talking about our programs. If there's a problem with sound, please let me know. But here we go. Everything that we do is meant to make lives better and um, to make that positive impact on society. As society grows and our population grows, we need to be able to build things. We need to be able to expand with it. So I think it's making not just a local difference or national difference, but a global impact as well. In order to build a building, you need to have a strong foundation. Without a strong foundation, the building will fall, something terrible would happen, things of that nature. So when we're talking about building for society and engineering for society, that's a real core piece to it. So our department is within the College of Science and Engineering, and we have three majors, 
civil engineering, environmental engineering, and geoengineering. Five emphasis areas. We have transportation engineering, environmental engineering, geoengineering, structural, and water resources. Um, civil engineering makes kind of an unknown impact on the world where um, our infrastructure is used every day by everyone, um, whether it's our utilities or roadways or just the buildings that we live in and work in. Um, and civil engineers have a, play a big part in making sure that those structures are safe. My main two interests are helping people and transportation. Help increase equity, help decrease carbon emissions. I want to be able to help as many people as possible. But it's also a technical field where science and math play a big part. Um, and I liked the kind of interactions that infrastructure has with our human everyday life. Studying transportation systems, how to design them, how to study how people and goods move. Transportation engineering is basically that, but the crux of it comes back to, in general, helping society by moving people and goods where they need to be. Environmental engineering would be the application of biology and engineering and chemistry to solve different environmental problems. So that could be restoration of different environmental sites that are polluted or water and wastewater treatment or even air pollution control. They're also having to know about different policies and how that affects not only us, but other communities as well all around the world. I decided that I wanted to study environmental engineering because of my background in chemistry. I wanted to find a way to apply what I already knew to solve environmental problems. So many civil engineers do, you know, structural analysis of like a building, for example. Well, we do the same analysis, but with soil. What really kind of got me interested was actually the geology portion of the geoengineering portion at first. Um, geoengineers also are commonly designed dams or levees, other very important everyday tools that we use to help protect, you know, society as a whole. You know, people have houses, people have businesses, things like this. So one thing that makes geoengineering unique in our department is that it is civil engineering with an emphasis in earth science. In addition to the technical classes that are offered in the department, there are other classes that cater more to your professional knowledge with ethics and project management. I think the department's done a great job, not only by teaching us what we have to learn, but also making sure that we hear from other working professionals and having different speakers come to our classes. I think that's been really helpful just to get insight and a different perspective. They really try to emphasize applicable knowledge. Being exposed to the different classes that I've taken and just learning more about them has really helped me understand what I want to do. I think the CEG department is a really great choice if you're interested in civil engineering. There are so many different research opportunities and different student groups that they can be a part of that will help them find what they actually want to do with their career. The Ability for you to grow is immense in this department. If you need any help or if you're trying to get involved, there's a lot of ways that you can do that within our department. And the sense of community is just really special. When you enter this department, you feel like you're a part of a family going towards the same goal. I think the CEG department is a really great choice if you're interested in civil engineering because we're in a really great university overall, but even though it's a very large public institution, our department is relatively small and you feel that you as a student are like known and there's a lot of opportunities. Oh. Wonderful. So next up, uh, we have
faculty, three faculty who are going to talk just a little bit about each of our majors, civil, environmental, and geoengineering. So I'd like to introduce Professor Aaron Serto to talk a little bit about environmental engineering. Hi, thanks, Michelle. Well, um, so that's a tough act to follow. I think Yesenia actually did a great job of describing what environmental engineering is about. Um, I, um, I sent uh, these, these pictures into Michelle for this presentation today to kind of highlight the variety of things that an environmental engineer um, might, might be involved in and, um, and really um, to show the balance between kind of how environmental engineering fits within civil engineering, right? Civil engineering, um, the umbrella is kind of all about infrastructure and kind of keeping our society running. Um, and water treatment is a big part of that, making sure that um, communities um, across the country and around the world have access to clean water. Um, but a lot of what environmental engineers do, I always think of as kind of like protection of the environment from society. There are a lot of things um, either built into our infrastructure or built into other parts of our economy um, that have the potential to cause environmental harm. And um, in order to make sure that we can kind of keep doing the things we do as a society, but minimize those harms, um, environmental engineers kind of uh, that's, that's where we come in. So yes, we need clean drinking water as, um, as a society to kind of keep our, keep our, um, sort of public health, um, healthy, I guess our public, keep our public healthy. Um, but we also generate wastewater. So, um, everything we flush down the toilet, uh, goes back into the environment, but not without being treated. So I've got a picture here of a wastewater treatment plant. I've got a picture of a landfill because if you throw things away, you can thank an environmental engineer for managing um, that solid waste, whether it's at a landfill, a hazardous waste incinerator, whether it's at a recycling facility or a composting operation. Environmental engineers also manage hazardous waste. Um, sometimes that means treatment at the source. Um, and sometimes it means uh, cleaning up um, uh, lands or waters that have been contaminated um, due to an accident associated with handling of hazardous waste. So actually the picture here, if you see a stream with some very orange water <laughs> flowing through it, um, that would be a, a mining waste spill that happened in, um, I think it was Arizona a few years back. Um, <clears throat> And then of course, um, in, we're concerned a lot about water, but we're also concerned about air. So air pollution control kind of falls under the purview of environmental engineering. Environmental engineers study a lot of the same things that civil engineers do. There's a lot of physics and um, mathematics, um, but with a special focus on chemistry, biology, microbiology, ecology, um, and then we balance that with some coursework in um, environmental policy, um, as well as everything that all engineers in our department should know, project management and, and ethics, that sort of thing. So that's, um, I think all I wanna say about environmental engineering, I wanna make sure we have a chance to hear from the students too. So I will um, pass it to the next uh, director of undergraduate studies or their next faculty member that's here today. And um, yeah, thanks. Thank you so much, Professor Serto. Next up, we have Professor Mickey Hanzo talking about civil engineering, which again is a broad major um, from that umbrella kind of diagram that I showed you earlier. But um, Mickey Hanzo, do you take, take it away? Uh, thank you, Michelle. Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. Good, thanks. So as Michelle mentioned, my name is Miki Honzo. I'm a faculty in the Department of Civil Environmental and Geoengineering. I am one of the three uh, directors of undergraduate studies. So I'm sure and confident that among three of us, we should be able to answer your questions 
and more importantly, we should be able to, that you feel comfortable in our department during your uh, study. You already learned about civil engineering in general, and um, you may ask a question, for example, uh, so uh, what is civil engineering? And uh, uh, civil engineering is everywhere around you. It is every road you drive, it is clean water you drink, then Erin uh, mentioned, it is uh, where you live, work and play. So these are all examples of uh, civil engineering. You may ask, so what are your challenges in the civil engineering? I think the most uh, important challenge for us, for faculty and the staff members is to transfer our knowledge to students, engineering communities and the public. So we are committed to transfer everything that we know about this profession to you. In terms of professional challenges, there are many, and uh, I will just mention a few. For example, how can we design, construct, maintain, and restore, engineer the natural environments with changing climate and uh, growing population? changing climate and increasing uh, human population uh, growth on planet, uh, global environmental issues, and we environmental engineers are very focused to be part of that uh, uh, challenging global uh, problem. Another question is, uh, or challenge is, how can we harvest renewable energy from the environment without damaging the environment? There are many research initiatives at the University of Minnesota and especially in our department where we are very active in that particular area. I just also want to mention that uh, civil engineering is a broad profession. It integrates several fundamental disciplines, including mathematics, physics, chemistry, microbiology, computer engineering, mechanics, uh, and uh, computer science. Over the past uh, 10 years, uh, we have been focused in our department in all uh, areas of civil engineering uh, uh, or to promote uh, so-called green engineering. And the idea of green engineering is that we design, maintain and restore, engineer the natural environments with the focus on working with the natural environment rather than ignoring and controlling that environment. So I would just like to do, uh, tell you welcome. We hope that you will be part of our community and that we might have an interesting collaboration within our department. Thank you, Professor Hanzo. And last, but certainly not least, is geoengineering and Professor Randall Barnes is here to tell us more about geoengineering. Randall, you're muted. Mm -hmm. I've been a geoengineer for more than 40 years and today I wanna to talk to you about why you should not be a geoengineer. One, geoengineers have to work both inside and outside. Did you know that geoengineers actually have to own a pair of steel-toed boots to wear on job sites? Geoengineers regularly risk sunburn, sometimes frostbite. They have to go out and view the construction of what they've actually designed in the office. It's far less dangerous to stay in the safety of your cubicle. The worst you risk there is eye strain. In a given year, a geoengineer may work in 25 to 50 separate projects. Each of those projects is unique because the earth is never the same from one location to the next. It's chaos, utter chaos. Geoengineers have to suffer designing new solutions to new problems on a steady, regular basis. It's far less taxing to stay in the safety of your cubicle, applying known solutions to a fixed set of problems. Three, a geoengineer cannot be anonymous. A geoengineer's name, stamp, signature must be publicly affixed to the designs and plans that they produce. 
In short, everyone knows who is responsible for a geoengineer's design. It's far less embarrassing to stay in the safety of your cubicle, maintaining your composure and faceless anonymity. Four, at graduation, a geoengineer has to suffer the dilemma of multiple job offers. Local, national, and international companies all vie for geoengineers. All of the attention can be overwhelming. It's far less upsetting to stay in the safety of your cubicle. A geoengineer must interact with the public, speaking to people. Yes, yes, real live human beings, asking the opinions of, heaven forbid, non-engineers and having to listen to their answers carefully and considerately. Then the geoengineer is expected to incorporate the people's opinions into their designs so as to actually make a difference in people's lives. It's far less emotional to stay in the safety of your cubicle, never having to interact with anyone but your office mates. Six, a geoengineer must steadfastly face the possibility that their career path may lead them to starting their own professional engineering company. The geoengineers may have to put their names on the company logo like Braun Intertech or Bar Engineering or perhaps their initials like WSB. It's far less of a burden to stay in the safety of your cubicle. A geoengineer works at the interface of human infra infrastructure in the earth at and below the Earth's surface, groundwater, foundations, slope stability, underground constructions, tunnels, carbon sequestration. These are all examples of geoengineering. It's a dirty job, but somebody has to do it. Just don't let it be you. I've been a geoengineer for more than 40 years, and I tell you, you probably don't want to be a geoengineer. Thank you very much for listening. Oh, that was wonderful, Professor Barnes. Well, after hearing from our faculty, we know that over and over we hear from students that really the most important piece that you like to hear from is actually the students who are in the department studying civil, environmental, and geoengineering because you want to hear from them and what it's like. So we have, I believe we have four uh, panelists here. We have AJ and Juan who are civil engineers. Nico, who is an environmental engineering major, and Madison, who's studying geoengineering. I'll ask you to use the Q&A function for questions. Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here, but we do want this to be interactive. So please uh, use that Q&A function to get your questions answered. I am gonna kick us off and ask that our panelists introduce yourself, your uh, year in school and maybe some things that you do in the department or even just around campus. Uh, I can go first. Uh, my name is Juan Lopez. I am a student in the civil engineering program. I'm a senior, so I'll be graduating this fall of 2021. Uh, things that I'm involved at school, I am a communications chair officer for the APWA group which stands for American Public Workers Association. Um, I'm a member in the ASCE uh, chapter as well. And I was involved with the Steel Bridge team last year. All right, uh, I can go next, I guess. Uh, my name is AJ Tabura. I was in the video, so I guess you know a little bit about me. Uh, but I am a junior right now studying civil engineering, specializing in transportation. And some things I'm involved with, I'm uh, one of the student officers for the American Society of Civil Engineers uh, chapter here in the University of Minnesota, our professional development group uh, for students like you guys who are going to be in the, the major. Also, one of the student outreach coordinators and I work with Michelle and some other faculty to uh, reach out to local K-12 schools and teach them about STEM and civil engineering. And I'm also a member of the uh, ITSO, Interdisciplinary Transportation Student Organization as well. Hey, I'm Nico. I'm a software in environmental engineering. Um, and in terms of stuff I do around campus, I'm currently the president of MIS, Minnesota Environmental Engineers, scientist and enthusiast, of which Erin is our advisor. <laughs> um, and um, so I, I currently we're a little bit on hold because 
kind of fell apart through the pandemic, but we're still existing. Um, and I'm also an officer in OSTEM, which is out in STEM for LGBTQ people in STEM. I'm Madison. I'm a junior studying geoengineering. I had an internship over the summer, and I'm currently doing research in the department. I'm also in a sorority on campus, and I'm a paying member of the Society of Mining, Metrology, and Exploration. Thanks for that. Um, we had a bunch of questions come in, so I'm going to start with some of those. How has it been finding internships as a geoengineering student? And I think that Madison, you can probably answer this best, but if anyone else wants to chime in about their internship experience, feel free to do that as well. Um, I interned at American Engineering Testing and that was really easy. I don't wanna downplay it, but they hire a lot of interns and they really like geoengineering interns specifically. So that was pretty easy to get. Um, at the career fair, I was talking to Braun Intertech, and as I was walking away from Braun, another company pulled me over because they heard I was a geoengineering major and like asked to talk to me because of that, which made me feel really special. Um, and I had an interview last Friday, so it's pretty easy. Anyone else want to chime in about their experience finding an internship and what that was like? Yeah, uh, I can jump in. Oh, sorry, Juan, you want to go first? All right, sure. Uh, just speaking from experience, like helping set up the ASC career fair, which is a career fair uh, for specifically civil, environmental, and geoengineers that we have every fall. A lot of the employers were hiring. They actually went up to us specifically saying, hey, we hope a lot of students show up because we need interns. We need some full-time people. So if you are in this department and you put in the effort, you know, and you apply yourself to these companies, then uh, the opportunities are pretty much endless because the, the job security is, is there. Um, I kind of had a similar um, journey as both, uh, both of the speakers. I got my first engineering internship pre-COVID which was when we used to, uh, the companies used to come every Wednesday or every bi-weekly on Wednesdays to set up uh, their tables and talk to students. And uh, basically, if you approach them and uh, get to talk to them and see what they do and what kind of positions they offer, most of the time they will uh, end up giving you an interview and offering you something. I also went to the career fair and like AJ said and Madison, um, they're, it's a lot of work, so they are actively seeking for interns and full-time um, employees. So you just have to be prepared and uh, go up to them and talk to them, and you'll probably get something. We got another question that I think um, you as students are well suited to answer. How difficult is the civil engineering coursework compared to some of the famously tough majors in CSE like mechanical and chem? Uh, I can go again. So for me, um, the general classes, obviously all of us have to take it, uh, civil, environmental, electrical engineers. Um, for me, It was more of it was more of a because I was a transfer student, so students here at the U take way more classes than I was used to. Um, but yeah, I guess managing your time with the classes and specifically for me, transportation was a bit difficult, mainly because it was not my biggest area of emphasis. But besides that, um, I think it's like any other of your uh, engineering classes. Um, I also want to touch up on what was the class called that Mr. Uh, Barnes teaches, uh, Dr. Barnes uh, computer applications. Um, it was difficult for me because I had no coding experience with MATLAB, but if you touch up on your coding, um, any language, I guess, um, I think it'll make it significantly better. Uh, 
Uh, I think really the, the, the difficulty of uh, the department comes from how wide of a range you'll be uh, studying with these classes because you'll you'll be taking, like Juan said, uh, stuff like computer applications, one class and then the next class it's water resources and the next class it's environmental engineering, the next class it's transportation. So even if it's you know not the same as some of the other majors in uh, CSE, it, it, it is still you know difficult to try to wrangle all these different levels of expertise and uh, really get a hold of that. But I, I will say that uh, even though there, there is like a wide range of classes that you do have to take and it might get difficult sometimes, the fact that the faculty here are very easy to reach out to and the classes are relatively small, even though it is you know pretty difficult, it becomes a lot manageable because uh, professors are easy to reach out to in office hours and you can talk to all the students in your classes as well. Very well put. What made each of you choose your major over other majors? You can go first. Um, I think I'm pretty unique in that I decided like right when I applied to college that I wanted to be environmental. But um, in, in high school, I met this uh, PhD student who was studying environmental engineering and she did sort of a high school outreach program. And she was kind of a mentor to me and I was really into, she did like microbiology stuff and I was into biology at the time. So I knew I wanted to do engineering. I knew I wanted to do biology. It worked out perfectly. <laughs> Um, for me, it was, uh, I knew I wanted to do engineering of some sorts. Um, I really pinpointed it down when I was in Normandale my last year, when I was about to transfer and I was applying to, um, programs here at the university. Uh, yeah, my counselor explained to me sort of what each one of the positions or each of the engineering, um, major did majors did. And I liked civil engineering because it was so broad and you can choose any route that you want or a bunch of them if you can. Um, and I also like the fact that a lot of the work that we do is not just office work. We get to actually go outside and see what we design and build or what we design. Um, so that was a, ma a major part for me on uh, choosing civil engineering. I think for geoengineering, I wanted to study geology. Someone asked about this, what made me pick um, geoengineering instead of environmental geoscience. And I really like rocks, as simple as that is, but also geoengineering is a lot more employable than earth science or environmental geoscience. And the civil engineering course load prepares you more for a geotechnical engineering role than environmental geoscience would. Uh, I chose civil engineering because I, I like trains. That was one of them. And two, I just really liked uh, the opportunity to design and build something that directly affects people's lives. Like everything that civil engineers do or environmental or geoengineers do is going to directly affect the public. And so I kind of like the idea of being able to help people and being able to directly make our society a better place to live like I, I think it's like so interesting and i think civil engineering in this entire department really encapsulates that pretty well what are some tips that you have for first year undergraduates who are interested in these majors but have no skills or experience with them Take CG 1101. It's a good class. That class is a intro class to 
the department's introduction to civil environmental and geoengineering. Um, I teach it, um, so I think it's pretty cool. It's one credit pass fail class and it's uh, learning about the more so like the careers of civil environmental and geoengineers just to make sure that you want to pursue that major before you get too far in. I'd also say uh, on top of that, uh, uh, don't undersell yourself because I'm sure you have something to, to offer, especially when you have the ability to, even as a freshman, join some of the clubs that the department has to offer, that the wider CSE has to offer. I think really getting a foothold into uh, some of the organizations, getting into like that networking and potentially setting yourself up for a leadership position in the future really helps you uh, develop skills, develop a network, develop interpersonal skills. And I think that will go a long way in terms of like your larger college career here at CSE. Similarly, do you have advice for freshmen who are looking for internships specifically with not much experience? How did you navigate that as a first year student trying to find that first opportunity to gain experience? Uh, I guess I could, oh, now Juan, you can take this one. I already interrupted okay. you, go ahead. Um, I'd say for me at the beginning, of my college career, I was a very shy student and I really struggled speaking with, um, uh, or just networking in general. So I kind of have to break myself out of my own shell. So when I was at Normandale, I took a public speaking class, which is not, I'm not saying people have to do that, but uh, I guess my point is you just have to get comfortable speaking with people and at least from what my managers have told me is that me approaching them and introducing myself, basically taking the initiative is what uh, really drew them to consider me for an interview. So I'd say just get comfortable, practice maybe with your friends, because that's what I did. Uh, they tried to interview me. And the first few days or the first few times that I did it, it, it just it was horrible. But as as I got more practice and I started interacting with more professionals, um, it got easier. And once you go up to them, it becomes second nature and you just feel like you're having a conversation at that point and your, your hands won't be as sweaty as mine were on my first time. Yeah, to, to go off of that, like I think for me, my freshman year, uh, going to career fairs, even if I wasn't explicitly looking for a job, helped me prepare to talk to potential employers. Like uh, I went to the ASC career fair, I went to the CSE career fair. I didn't, I didn't even have a resume. I just wanted to talk to employers, kind of get that experience so I can get better at that. And uh, I, I had an internship right out of my freshman year. And the biggest thing that I can like really take away from that was just apply to as many places as possible. A lot of places are gonna be looking for like upperclassmen, but you never know, like there will be like companies who are just looking for uh, someone to take under the wing and teach them the ropes. I uh, interned at my local county's uh, Department of Transportation. They required no like actual experience uh, and I still did a lot of really cool things related to civil engineering, a lot of construction management, a lot of uh, uh, actual engineering out in the field. So even if it doesn't seem like it's an easy get, just apply, 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 like anywhere you can, because there's going to be opportunities at some level. I see some questions here about pairing our three majors with minors or perhaps even double majoring. So I'm curious if any of you as students are double majoring or minoring or know of peers who are doing that. Do you have any advice?
Um, I personally am only majoring in one um, for civil engineering. Um, but I have heard of some students here at the, some, uh, some classmates that are, I believe, minoring in construction management, I think it's called. So that's something that pairs well with uh, civil engineering as a whole. And I also, I could be wrong, but for environmental engineering, I think um, something with, uh, what is it called? Uh, something in chemistry, I can't remember, but for civil engineering, definitely uh, project manager. Yeah, I, I think for environmental engineering, it's ecological engineering, correct me if I'm wrong, but you basically get that for free if you take environmental engineering plus one, I think it's like a, an ecology class. So it's, it's not really anything different from what you would normally do. For geoengineering, it's really easy to get an earth science double major. I know multiple people doing it. I think an environmental geoscience double major would also be pretty easy, but it's a relatively new major. So we're not totally sure about that one. Uh, for civil engineering, I know of some people who are doing computer science and civil engineering. There's a lot of uh, good crossover there. Uh, I'm also personally minoring in urban studies. So if you're, especially if you're interested in transportation, uh, engineering, or anything like that, municipal, uh, urban studies and civil engineering pair very well together. I only have to take like maybe seven more credits than I currently am, and I have the minor. So uh, all pair very well. Wonderful. This is a question specifically for Madison. And I think Aaron, that if you wanted to chime in too with your experience as well, the question, um, were you worried at all coming in as a woman into CG, into the department, maybe even into STEM or engineering? Yes, I'll go first. Um, I think I was a little bit, the geoengineering department is really, really small in the first place, but it also has a lot of women, or at least a normal amount of men, women, like 50-50, I'd say. So for geoengineering specifically, I'm not that worried. Um, even civil engineering, I had a professor look at our class and comment about how many women were in the class compared to previous years and how it's more common for women to join. I think more women should join. I was a little worried, but I have my sorority to back me up too, if I'm ever feeling anything. And a lot of people understand. Plus it makes you more employable being a woman. I don't know if you want me to add to this. I was a um, female chemical engineering student in the late nineties and the, the, the look and feel of our department is a lot different than that. And some of that is time. And some of that is, um, is the department. I will say, I think that I agree with Madison. I think that um, relative to some of the other departments in the college, we actually have a much more gender balanced um, uh, student um, group of students. Um, I think that the environmental engineering major um, has more women than men in it. Um, um, if we're, you know, I mean, if we're just looking at, at binary choices there. So uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I guess that's all I'll add. <laughs> yeah, thanks so much for giving your perspective on that. Appreciate it. We are running out of time. So there are many questions that we have not yet answered, but I would encourage you to reach out to anybody who is on the screen right now with those questions that were answered. Hopefully we'll answer a couple more as we continue on, but um, thank you all for your wonderful questions. That was really fun. We're gonna continue on here. Can I reshare with you all here? Wonderful. Again, thank you, AJ, Juan, Nico, Madison. Thank you for your time today, sharing your experience with us. I wanted to briefly talk about 
a career in civil environmental and geoengineering as you engineer for society and why students choose to go into these careers. And so we ask, we ask our students, we ask our alumni, why did you choose to go into, a, into your career? And we compiled all that data and really found very strong themes. And so I'm gonna share those themes with you. One is that our students want to help and serve the community. And I think you heard those themes in our student panel. People study and go into civil, environmental, and geo because they want to solve real world issues. You heard some of those, that's things like working with or making sure there's clean water, air pollution, green energy, sustainability, our roads and transportation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The third reason is to make a very tangible and practical difference. That can mean seeing and touching what you design and build, often on very large scales. And finally, the last one, as Professor Barnes would say, the reason why you wouldn't want to become a geoengineer or a civil or environmental engineer. You have to work outside. You have to get out of your cubicle and go in the field, work outside. Oftentimes that is negotiable on kind of what your interest is and how much time you spend out outside in the field or not, depending on where you choose to take your career. As a civil environmental and geoengineer, you have opportunities to work both in the private sector, maybe with a consulting firm or in the public sector. So for your county or for the city of Minneapolis, for example, or for um, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. You have, as we've talked about, the opportunity to work both outdoor and indoor. And special to civil environmental and geoengineering is they're needed everywhere. So even in the rural areas, they're needed in urban areas and internationally. So sometimes if you are, if you are interested in traveling in your career, there is opportunity to do that. Many of the civil engineering or the, yeah, civil engineering firms sometimes are, many of them are headquartered here in Minneapolis or they have a branch and those are national companies, but also international companies who could work on a project in a different country. And let's talk about pay real quick. So this is the average median salary for civil, environmental, and geoengineers in Minnesota, 2020. So remember 2020, kind of a weird year, but this seems to be on trend with the years that we've been tracking. So I thought these would were still pretty accurate, even though this was COVID year. And very quickly, I also saw in the, in the questions, questions about admission requirements. I wanna show those to you quickly. And up next, we are trying something new this year. So we are actually going to have a CG student group fair right now. And so many of you in the questions were asking, how can I get involved? How can I meet others? How can I gain experience? How can I figure out if this is for me? How can I meet people? And an answer to all of those is to join and participate in student groups. And if you're interested in civil, environmental, and geoengineering, our student groups are a great place to start. So I'm gonna tell you the process and then introduce you to some of the student groups who are here today. So in a couple minutes, I'm going to put a Google doc into the chat that you can open. And then you will see Zoom links to different Zooms and you can hop between the Zooms. You can spend four minutes here, five minutes there, whatever works for you. You can hop between Zoom meetings to visit with leaders in the student groups to get a better idea of what they're all about, maybe sign up for their email list, hear about what they're doing, that sort of thing. 
So I'm gonna introduce the groups to you now that are here. So you can talk to our steel bridge team who design and fabricate and build a steel bridge for competition. We also have ITSO, which you heard mentioned on our student panel, Interdisciplinary Transportation Student Organization. So all things transportation. We have APWA, American Public Works Association. We have our CEGE student ambassadors. AJ is a part of this. And this is K-12 outreach. We have the American Society of Civil Engineers. It's a professional chapter that we have at the university. And I think maybe lastly, we have Engineers Without Borders who, have, who are doing community projects and then every other year travel to those locations. And they are doing projects with Ethiopia and Guatemala currently. Yes, and that is all. So that's a very, very brief overview. I'm gonna stop sharing here. I'm gonna get that Google Doc real quick and put it in the chat for you. Okay. So again, this Google Doc has those Zoom links. So please feel free to, for the next, this can go over six o'clock. So maybe till 6.15 or so, you are free to bop between whatever Zoom room you like. It was wonderful to talk to you all. Thank you for coming today. If you have questions, feel free to reach out to me or any of the students who are in the panel or our faculty. All right, thank you everyone who is still here. Look at that Google Doc in the messages in the chat and go talk to some student groups. It's been great. Bye everybody.